everyone. I am filming this morning for you a Q&A of a very special variety. So we're going to be talking about sex. I would um, put the like, let's talk about sex song right here, but I don't want to buy the rights to it. So. So I asked people on Instagram and Snapchat for their best sex questions, things that they were embarrassed to ask their friends. Um, and they'd rather ask a stranger on the internet. Before we start the Q&A though, I wanted to talk about one thing. Um, someone sent me an article this morning and it's from Women's Health. The title of this uh, article is Why Are Women Putting Wasps, Wasp Nests in Their Vagina? What? One thing I wanna say before this Q&A starts, there's a couple of things that belong in your vagina. Wasp nests are not one of them. It says in here um, that wasp nests in your vagina is good for natural vaginal tightening, is remove, believed to remove unpleasant odor and itching. I feel like it's a new whole set of issues when you put a wasp nest up there. I'm just saying, it's like a different kind of itching. Like, what if a, okay, nightmare, what if a wasp was still in there and then you put the wasp nest up there and then the wasp couldn't escape? Someone should make a horror movie about this. Anyway, um, don't do that. So Q&A question one. What are your thoughts about sex on a first date? I think you should feel comfortable in whatever situation in dating or relationships in general. So if you're on a first date and you're feeling like, I really, really wanna have sex with this person, do it. I mean, be careful, use protection, and also, don't be upset when they don't call you back. But what I want to say is don't have sex on the first date if you think that it's going to seal the deal. Or if you feel like they're going to be disappointed in you or not like you as much because you haven't had sex with them. That's bullshit. So let's just get that out of the way. Like whether you do or you don't, it should never be dependent on how the other person's going to feel about you after it happens or it doesn't happen. If you're using sex on the first date as a tool to get to a second date or a relationship or proving that you're like down, don't do it. Don't do it. Do whatever you fucking want to do. Um, I've had sex on the first date before, I'm not going to lie, and it um, sometimes turns into a relationship and sometimes you never hear from that person again. So you just have to set yourself up for the expectation of who knows? Who knows? You just have to basically do what you want to do and just managing your expectations is the most important part. What is the kinkiest thing a guy has ever asked you to do? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was actually on a great date one time um, with this guy and I was like, you know that, that time to date where you're just like, this person's amazing. Like, this is great. So we were sitting outside of his apartment at the end of the date and he was like, um, I just have something to tell you. Which is, let's just note that I have something to tell you is never something you wanna hear ever, but on a first date especially. It's never like, I have something to tell you, you're the best. It's always like, I, you know, have 17 cats or I um, am dating you because you look like my mom or this one actually happened. Um, my ex-girlfriend's moving in because we're having a baby together, but we're just gonna be like roommates. Is that cool? Um, all these things come after the sentence, I have something to tell you. Not great. So I'm sitting, uh, you know, outside this guy's house and we're like having this romantic moment. I have something to tell you. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, I cannot get off um, without like feet. So I'm like trying to control my face. I'm like, okay, tell me more about that. I'm trying to be like an open, nice person. Um, and he's like, yeah, it's just like, you know, like the feet on the junk is like the thing that makes it happen. And I'm like, now, people with like fetishes, whatever, do you, like live your life. But for me personally, 
giving someone like stimulation with my feet sounds like more ab work than I'm willing to do um, in life. So I, I, I wasn't really up for the job. The job. On to the next question. Why are people rude when you don't have a boyfriend and don't fuck everything you see? I feel like you get judged as a single person um, because it's seen that you should be wanting what everyone else has and that's just simply not true. Everyone has different things they want for their life, different things they tolerate, different things that they like and I think people assume if you're single that you want to be in a relationship, if you're married that you want to have a baby, if uh, you have a baby and you're married that you wish you were single. <laughs> kidding um no but I think I think there's always these expectations of what you should want or how you should be and especially I think not hating on man men not a, I'm not a man hater but I do think um men assume that you are being cold sometimes when you don't want to like jump on their penile immediately um and that's simply not true. We just want different things. And I think there's different routes to get there. So ignore it. Don't worry about it. This is what I've learned from living in internet land. People are going to think you're rude for anything. Literally, one time I put almond butter on top of my yogurt and someone goes, it looks like you took a shit on your yogurt. If I wanted to take a shit on my yogurt, I would. Okay? This is almond butter. Grow up. But people are just like rude. They get offended about everything. So just don't worry about it. And also, um, if you're hanging out with guys that think you're rude because you won't fuck them, you need to hang out with different guys. Mm. Next question. Any tips for someone who's never dated before and has been called the automatic friend zone? So I actually have had this conversation a lot with different friends. Um, I personally deal with the opposite of this. I'm so friendly and nice. Well, I'm not nice. I'm friendly and outgoing. So guys automatically think I'm hitting on them. So sometimes that means like a guy gets like way too interested, but then sometimes it ends up being like a guy that I'm not interested in. He's like, like I'm my girlfriend. I'm like, boo, I'm not trying to date you. Don't worry. Don't be stressed. Like guys will like over exaggerate that they are in a relationship because I think I'm hitting on them and really I'm just trying to like order a sandwich. I think a lot of times women get immediate friend zone because they're willing to give too much. Um, you're willing to basically cater to the other person completely. And I'm, I'm gonna go archaic a little bit that men do want a little bit of a challenge. Men do want to feel like they're pursuing something and I think uh, you know, someone that feels like a strong, feminine, empowered woman can can say, I'm going to allow this man to pursue me. I think that's a good thing. Or woman, whatever your, you know, your preferences are. But I think there is something to not giving your emotional bandwidth, your physical bandwidth, your time, all of that to someone who really isn't giving that back to you. So I know a lot of the women in my life that have been, you know, that get put in the friend zone very quickly are typically ones that will be there for the guy, um, anything they need. You know, they're the ones that like the guy will call at two in the morning if they're locked out of their house. They're the girls that are like, when a guy's going through a hard time, they're always on the other end of the phone, um, giving support emotionally or whatever. But they're also the girls that get fucking heartbroken when the guy comes to them and is like, Oh my God, I like this girl so much. If you're, if you're wishing that relationship to turn from friendship to something romantic, it just rarely ever happens. I think that's, I think that's like probably one of the more uncommon things to happen is for a, a friendship to turn into a relationship really. I think your relationship should always be a friendship, but it's, it's really hard. And sometimes relationships turn into friendships but I think it's really hard to manufacture it the other way. To consolidate my tips, I would say, really be aware of the emotional, physical, mental bandwidth you're giving to people for free with asking nothing in return. And if that's happening over and over, really take a look at your behaviors and analyze them. 
be honest with yourself. Like, how do I allow myself to be treated? How do I, how much of myself do I give people before asking anything in return? Next question. What is your favorite position and why? I think it depends on my level of soreness, like physically sore from exercise and or tiredness level. Like I'm all about positions that both people can be having a great time without, you know, dealing with lower back issues. By the way, this is what life is like when you're 30. You're like, I literally one time had to stop having sex. I'm like, oh, my knee, my knee, my knees. Like, I feel like my knee injury. I feel my knee injury. And I'm like, wow, fucking old. So, um, but as I was thinking about this, I was like, what, like, what are all the positions? And I read this article and I have to share with you some of these ridiculous positions that I saw. Okay. This first one is called the flying buttress. Who would do this? Like, as a lady person, I would not want a guy staring at me from that angle. That is not the best look. And also, where is my face? Is it on the floor? Is it on the bed? Where are we doing this? And also, am I doing a push up the whole time? I'm not trying to plank while having sex, you know? I like, will work on my core another time. This is called limbo like me. I don't understand how this works. Like, are you, are you, like, you're not, you're like moving your body like up and down, but like while you're laying down, like this, this feels like a lot of coordination is involved. Um, also, like, I don't know how you get into this position, to be honest. Um, feels confusing. Okay, next one. Raised doggy. This is that game that used to play on field day at school. This is literally the wheelbarrow game and we made it a sex thing. First of all, I can't tell you how tired my arms already are and I've never done this position. Also, I don't like that I feel like I'm at track and field day and we aren't wearing matching jerseys. Or maybe we are. I don't know, but this seems like way too much work for like a limited amount of pleasure. This last one is called taking the L train. And this mostly looks like a nap to me. Honestly, this, this looks like I'm just resting, which I love. So maybe this is my favorite position is just resting. I think doggy style is the most comfortable for everyone involved. Um, just as long as there is no confusion about where everything goes because you're in for a different kind of treat. Next question. So I went out with this guy once and my family has a requirement to meet whoever I'm going out with with a quick hi and bye. But the guy said he's not good with parents. What does that mean? This guy is either a mass murderer or he feels like you're moving too quickly. He doesn't understand that everyone gets treated this way uh, that you date. So he is definitely like, whoa, this is moving too fast. Like I need to put the brakes on this. I need to slow it down. Um, because for a lot of people meeting a, a family member or meeting friends or whoever is like a big commitment. You have, to, you have to understand like that's a lot of pressure for most people is they're just now meeting you and meeting you is stressful enough that going to meet your family is is like double duty. It's like so overwhelming. So I would say like either he's a mass murderer, number one. Number two, he feels like it would be moving very fast to meet your family. Or number three, he's already nervous about meeting you and so just adding in meeting other people is stressful. So I would say give him a break on this unless he's the mass murderer. In that case, you should probably not go out with him. Next question. I'm friends with a guy who I think could really be the one. We dated for a bit last summer, but he broke things off because he wasn't ready for a relationship. We've been in constant contact through text since last summer, and the contact has increased for us in the past month and a half. How do I get him to now take me seriously as girlfriend material? Thanks so much. Okay, I'm gonna say something you're not gonna like. It's never gonna happen. 
It's never gonna happen under the current circumstances. He is getting what he needs without anything being asked of him. You're not asking him for commitment or um, vulnerability or a relationship or anything. You're basically giving him a relationship through like an emotional bond through texting or talking without him having to do anything. And it's just so rare for that to turn into something romantic. And also you're not really, you don't really deserve this. Like to hear that you've been carrying on for a year and you're obviously deeply invested in this with, you've gotten nothing in return rather than fake emotional support. That is heartbreaking. And I want you to stop. I know this might be unpopular and you might be like not wanting to hear that and you want me to give you some like magical tricks to turn someone into like the relationship of your dreams, but it is not going to happen in this way. I can promise you that. You know, being really honest with him and saying, listen, I feel like we talk a lot. I feel like we communicate constantly. I'm interested in you, but if you're not interested in me in that way, then I, I really can't put forth this much effort. Any guy worth his salt that actually likes you or actually has interest will either say, damn, like, you're right. I, I Let's try this. Or the worst thing that can happen is he's like, oh, I don't want a relationship. I'm not ready for that. I just want to be friends. Why can't it just be the same? Or he freaks out. And then you know, this guy is not supposed to be in your life in this capacity. You're not supposed to be wasting your time on this. So, you know, I don't have an answer for you that is like, here's how to change his mind. I think you have to be really honest and be ready for whatever he says in return. And I have a feeling he might say, oh, I'm still not ready for a relationship. That does not mean keep hanging on. It means he is non-committal. He doesn't want to date you. You're doing yourself an injustice by putting time and energy and what feels like a relationship into someone that really isn't there. He isn't in that same headspace. And you have to understand that. And you have to respect it. You have to respect it and respect yourself and move on. Um, but you can talk to him about it first. And seriously, if it freaks him out, it's not ever going to happen. If a conversation, if an honest conversation can't happen and he, he feels overwhelmed by that, you know that it's not right. And you just need to, you just need to keep on tracking. One other thing I will say is, and I tell this to people all the time and I have to tell it to myself all the time, is every day you wake up with, let's say, you know, a cup full of energy like this big. And you only have so much. You only have so much in emotional energy and relational energy. And the thing is, is if you start to give that away little by little, even if it doesn't feel like a lot, even if it's just answering a text or checking in or making, having little inside jokes or whatever, your emotional energy is lessened that you can give to someone else. So you are literally spending money, emotional money on someone and you will be poorer. And so when someone does come in the picture that needs and deserves your your energy, your emotional and relational energy, you won't be able to give it because you're tired out. And you probably won't even be able to see it because you've transferred all this energy into this other space. So I would really think about that and, and really consider like, where am I putting my emotional energy and is it worthwhile? So that's my two cents. That's probably not the answer you wanted, but it's the answer you might've needed. How do the people that you date boyfriend or past relationships handle your popularity on social media? You know, this has been a really interesting uh, thing to deal with. Some people I've dated are cool with it. They're fine with it. They're super supportive. They want to be involved. And then, you know, what's been really hard is I've met people that maybe online or on Tinder or whatever that don't know what I do and then they Google me but then they don't actually take the time to like read any of the content or whatever. Like I literally had a guy be like, I don't wanna meet up with you because I don't like fame whores. And I'm like, well, first of all, fuck you. Second of all, I'm really glad I didn't spend my time meeting someone so close-minded 
and so judgmental. But third, it like bummed me out because it feels like all social media people get looped into this bubble of being vain and self-absorbed and like Instagram model, all of those kinds of things. And it just, it bums me out. So it has ranged from super supportive, want to be involved, will like be Instagram husband all the way to, hey, like, I'm cool that this is what you do, but I don't really want to be on camera or, or be involved in, in any way that highlights who they are, which I totally understand. I think a major concern is that like, if there's a breakup or if there's issues or whatever, that that person will somehow like have an army of women that like might kill them for hurting my feelings, which is amazing. And I totally support that. But anyway, yeah, so I like to keep people out of the spotlight um, for the most part because I feel like I share so much of myself and my life on social media that some things have to be sacred and some things have to be private and I always want to be respectful and loving to the people I'm with and and also respectful and loving to myself and, and not have to be on camera all the time. Um, because when I'm with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I really, I really want to give them my attention, my full attention. That's why actually on social media, you don't see a ton of me with my friends or um, like I'll show it briefly, but, but really it's not so much because I don't want to show them. It's because I want to be really engaged when I'm with them. And so I'm not usually on my phone, which is great. I think it's a good thing. I'm probably never gonna change it. I will always talk about breakups and heartache and dating and, and all the stuff that comes with that, but I try to protect people's privacy as much as possible. Um, next question is, um, I don't always finish during sex with my boyfriend, which is no biggie to me at all. I still get pleasure and it's a big deal to him and it's put a strain on our relationship before. How can I make sure that he knows it's okay? I love him. Well, also you sound so nice. Like you sound really nice. Um, that's not okay with all women. Some women are like, I need to be happy before we end this conversation. Um, for me, I've been in both situations. I've been in the situation of being like, hello, um, hello, I need some additional attention. Or I've been in a situation where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Are you good? You good? I'm good. I'm good if we don't. We're good. I would say if you're mature enough to have sex, you should be mature enough to have a conversation about your needs, what you like, and also what your expectations are. I think by saying things in the moment of like, this feels so good and I'm like really enjoying myself and this like it isn't so much to me about the end point as it is about enjoying myself in the process. All of those things, I think by talking about it really honestly with your significant other, um, it's the best way to go about it. I'm sure what he's feeling at that moment is he's feeling really, really self-conscious. And so any way you can meet him in helping him feel less self-conscious about himself and his performance is better. So that might not just be like, hey, don't, it's okay that I didn't finish. Like I still had fun, but I think it's building up things in his confidence in life, um, not just in the bedroom. So making sure that you feel really taken care of, that, that he feels really like you appreciate the things he does for you. I think when you build up a person um, in general and how they feel about themselves, those kind of situations that are more sensitive, like physically or, or whatever, they become a little easier to manage. Do all women enjoy sex? Because I don't. I love being close to the person I'm with in that intimate setting, but act the actual sex part is just, eh. To be clear, I'm not referring to oral. That's not a problem at all. Good to know. Um, no. No, all people don't enjoy everything. Like I met a person that did not like avocado the other day. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, who are you? You're not a person I wanna spend any time with. But then I realized, you know what? Not everyone has to like avocado. There's more avocado for me then. Um, 
I'm not using avocado as a euphemism for sex right now either. Um, so I would say, no, all women don't enjoy sex. Also, all women enjoy sex at different times. Sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. Sex drive changes through life. Sex drive changes from person to person. I've dated people where I felt a significant amount of sexual energy and then others where I'm like, meh, take it or leave it. Sorry guys, if you're watching this. You're not really asking me for any advice, but I'm just saying like, know that you're not alone. Not all women think sex feels good. Not all women really enjoy sex. I think we want an overall intimate experience. And a lot of times for men that is physical and a lot of times for women it is too, but sometimes it's not. And that's totally fine. I think as long as you are balancing off your partner's needs and your needs, I think that's what's important. Last question. I've always wanted to ask, can waxing down below stretch the skin and make you saggy? I stopped waxing because of this fear. Girl, no. I, I, I don't think it does anything. I mean, sure, like anytime you pull skin, like maybe that creates wrinkles. Like I always freak out because my eyelash lady like puts this like tape underneath my eyes and then she rips it off. I'm like, oh, I just got 10 other wrinkles. But no, for the most part, your vagine skin is pretty resilient. Think about the amazing amount of torture it goes through. So I think you're fine. I've never heard of uh, it getting saggy. They're also not like, they're waxing like the outer lips, but they're not like actually waxing your vagina lips. So it's not like that. And also it doesn't matter if like it's like, honestly, it's like my last, Q and A, we talked about waxing, go watch it. I was saying, your vagina is a really excellent party. They should be happy that they're there. So if you personally are worried about sagging, I don't know, you can think about it, but don't be worried about other people looking at your vagina and thinking, oh, she's a saggy vagina. Like they're not thinking that, trust me. They don't have an opinion on it. You have an opinion on it. So I would say I'd rather be waxed and feeling fresh than worrying about saggy vagina although i think saggy vagina is my new favorite phrase and i want to call people that all the time okay guys thank you so much that is the end of this q a i hope you got something out of this even if you didn't ask the questions um the thing i want to stress the most is that sex relationships insecurities all that we should be talking about it more not less it shouldn't be something that's dirty or shameful if you have questions about any of this, feel free to find me on Instagram, find me on Snapchat, or ask me a question right down in the comment section. And lastly, I have to say it, if you like this, if you think I'm funny, if you laughed a little, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.